one of the items I got for a buck was this KAV60 gateway. I think it's a 10 inch notebook and it's Windows XP and it comes right out but I have to run it on the charger. He had a whole box of chargers all mixed up and this one don't say gateway on it but it is 19 volts 1 amp. It's pretty warm and it takes 1.5 amps but I think that's the running amps not the charging so it's the only charger that'll fit in here I have my Acer which is 19 volts but I don't know whether that would fit and charge it but I think this would be okay um, so I got this for a buck this is just one of the items I picked up today I'm going to show you the rest of them outside Okay, first of all, I picked up this bag so I can put everything in it. This was a buck. This was a buck, 12 volt. I think it's 3.2 gallons per minute water pump. I picked up baby monitor, the monitor part has got a small screen I think like two inches or so uh, but it's in the house and it's being charged it does work wireless baby monitor and then I got this for a buck GPS there's the book on it German G-E-R-M-I-N uh, but sadly they left the batteries in it, two double A's, and it chewed up the top of the, well, the battery connectors on top here. So I'm going to try to get those out. And in addition to that, I got this huge pry bar here. I'm going to say, I haven't measured it, but it's it's about four foot long this was five bucks this is not Harbor Freight steel this is American made this is and it's the only thing wrong it's got a tiny tiny curve in it here he had four or five of these over there and this is heavy I'm gonna say this is uh, one inch this is about one inch so this was uh, a yard sale about a mile from me and uh, I haven't got a bar this big. This would be good for pulling out stones and stuff. Or I could have used this when I did my deck, rebuilt my deck and tore the old deck down there years ago. I'm going to try to get these batteries out of here, but I doubt the contacts are going to be salvageable, especially the ones down below where I can't get at it. I'm not sure if this is one of these GPS's where you drive along or whether it's, I can't really tell, my magnifying glass, I can't really tell what that is. No big deal. I got all these items, including that little 10 inch gateway uh, notebook for five bucks, and that counts this case. And there's a lot more stuff over there, printers and things like that. But uh, the garage was pretty hot, so I couldn't stand staying in there too long. It's a hot day today, although not as humid as it has been. So we're going to open this up here, or at least wise get the batteries out of here. So you want to watch me, um, I'll put you on a tripod and you can watch me. I was afraid of. There's another one in there. And there's no visible way to take this apart. I usually destroy things when I try to open them. Uh, there's a battery. There's one more double A in here. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, get this thing in the camera here. 
some of this Radio Shack contact cleaner. I haven't used it in years, but this is the stuff that evaporates quickly. But maybe just a little bit in here. Maybe I can clean it out somehow. All right, I'm going to put some a uh, little bit of liquid wrench in there. Very little. I don't want it to get down into the electronics. I just want to just put a little bit in here. And there's one battery in there. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. This one's clear. Double A is stuck in there. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid wrench in there. And I got the uh, the can rather than the spray so that I can just put just a little bit in there. And I really need a Q-tip in here, but I need a long one. And I don't have one. Yeah, that's I really need something to get in there. So all it does is just screwdriver just pokes through the rag and I can't seem to do anything. I'll have to put more in there. Alright. That's all I'm gonna to try to put in there because I don't want it to get into the electronics. I don't know how to get this thing apart here. And you know me, uh, I break things when I try to open them up. I'm a, I'm a bull in a china shop when it comes to things like this. And I have more difficulty because of my bad eyesight, as you, most of you know. Today's not a bad day out here. The humidity's comfortable. And I'm in the shade, so as long as I got those two things working for me, I hope you can still see me. I'm trying to pay attention to this and then stretch over and look at the viewfinder. I'm going to get that out. I'm getting a lot of oil out of there. I don't dare put any more in. Hey, I got it out. I got it out. But I can't see the contacts down there. I got to get something in there to clean that out with. See if I can prop that up in the air like that. Let it, let it drain out. And I'll come back on the video in a minute. All right, folks. I've got some Q-tips. Ordinary household Q-tips. They're just not long enough to reach down. Way down in, but I could probably get some of them out. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I try to keep this upside down as much as possible. So I don't get any of that oil in there. Man, you got some dirty ears. I really need to get in there. This won't reach. This won't reach in there. So the next step is to put something, if I can got a dowel or something, I can stick on the end of that. Stand this up here so we don't get some oil back into the 
system. All right, I gotta get something other than a screwdriver, or maybe a blunt. I might have a steel rod that I can put this cloth on and then push it up in there, and clean the hole out. All right, I got a couple of tools here, a pin punch uh, and a chisel, and um, we're gonna put the cloth around it. See if we can try to clean out that. We'll lay this down like this for now. See if I can try the bigger one first. My concern is the inside contacts. The ones over here, I can pretty well deal with, but the ones on the inside, I really can't see in there. My eyesight's so poor, I need, a, a, I need to get a little light in there and then a magnifying glass and see how they, how they are. And you know, if they're corroded, I can hit them with the end of a screwdriver and just try to clean them up a little bit. Now, you know, I've done that too. I've left batteries in there. In these, I you know, battery-operated products, and you know, it just—it's bad, you know. Now let's put the smaller one on here. I get a decent amount of fabric to go around that without bunching up here. There we go. Now. This one's okay. It's this one's pretty. It's not really all that bad. It looks worse than it is. The spring itself is in good shape. A surrounding the spring isn't too good, but I'm going to hit that with contact cleaner. I'll get this off camera in a minute. Okay. Now, off camera, I'm going to try to look down in there with a magnifying glass and a flashlight. Okay, I got to shoot some contact cleaner in there. The, what I can see of it, it's hard to get a good focus with a magnifying glass down in there because it's almost down to here with two double A's on top of each other, which usually brings you down about here, about three inches. I'm estimating this thing's about five inches long. So I'm going to try to shoot some contact cleaner in here. I'll get it away from the camera here. Okay. Ooh, that made that whole thing cold. Wow, did that freeze the side of this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to try to ream this out a little bit. I can't really tell if the... Uh, Contacts are 100%, but I'm going to try to clean them off with a screwdriver. I'll do that off camera. And what you basically do is you just take the screwdriver and you... Am I in camera here? And you, and you, you have to go like this, and this is what I have to do down inside. That's it. Tommy's moving the camera for me here, so... All right, so this is how you, how you clean them if they got corrosion on them. If they don't have corrosion, you don't need to do that. I can't get this down in there because this ain't long enough, so I got to get a longer screwdriver to go down there. And a ideal thing to do is to take something like this and fasten a piece of sandpaper on the edge, fine sandpaper, 
and shove it down there and just rotate this. And that's one way to clean the contact. As a matter of fact, I think I might just do just that. Um, I think I'm going to do that. So hang on a minute. I'm going to make a cleaning wand, contact cleaning wand. And it's nothing more than just a um, piece of sandpaper on the edge, on the end of this here. So we take some fine sandpaper, in this case it's 120 grit. And I can probably get two out of that. And uh, I don't know how well this is going to work out. I've never done this before. This is just a brainstorm that I had, and hopefully it doesn't get stuck down in there. Although I think I have a tool I can I can retrieve this with if I need to. If I need to, I can do that. Doesn't look like that's going to be too good, though. This might not work out. Well, it's rough. The main thing is, I get in there. The question is, can I get in in this here? Apparently there's four batteries because I just got one just came out of here uh, be off camera. So we, there is four double A's that go in here. Now we'll shoot it again. Get the stuff out. Clean it out. Q-tip here. Just uh, make sure that there's no junk in there. And then we take the other, which is very lightly, you don't want to take any coating off unless it's got, you know, unless it's all corroded. These weren't too bad. I am going to ask Oom that this may be ready to go. There's only one way to find out, but before we do that, there's no markings for the plus or minus. And I didn't really pay attention. One negative was up and one was down. Both of these spring contacts here are the same. So we got a we got the book right here. And we got the, the book. And we got the book and we going to see which way the polarity goes. And before we do that. Uh, we got to go get uh, four, uh, four AA batteries, and we be right back with you. Going this, I have a feeling that this is not your typical GPS that um, we're used to. I think this is the real old ones that were complicated, judging from this here. But we'll find out. Let's see now the batteries. Looking at the unit, the negatives are up on the left side. Alright, so as you're looking at the unit this way, with the cover down, the negatives are up on this side and the positives are up on this side. Alright. Now we got some ever ready goals here. Oh, it's already marked here anyways. It's embossed in here. I have a problem seeing that. Uh, positives up. Here. And here. Alright, let's see. Well, 
All right. Well, searching E P E. No idea, but this is all else fails. Read the book, right? This is a GPS 12, that's all it says here. So, it still says searching, so I have no idea what this thing, even though I hit quit, it still says searching. GPS 12. 12 channel. Well, no idea. Guess I better take the batteries out of this. Alright, now it's turned off. Well, interesting, but Maybe somebody will have a use for it. Okay. All right, of course I showed you this in the early part of the video. Um, this plugs in the baby monitor, Motorola, and the uh, portable unit is being charged in the house. I have no idea if this will travel as far, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna go in the house and see um, if the uh, receiver is working. Um, I doubt the battery's gonna take a charge, but I don't have the instruction book on this. I have to look the model number up and check online. But let's go in the house and see what the, the receiver's doing, if it can pick up anything, which would basically just be this door, probably. And I wanna turn it on here, see if it comes on, but it's still plugged in. Okay. I don't think you'll be able to see that on the screen. Yeah, there's the door of the shed. But I doubt you'll be able to see that. Yeah, it's not a focus, of course, because the camera can't focus that close. Well, it's been on charge for about an hour, I say, and it doesn't take a charge, so it works if you have it plugged in. All right, after several hours, this is all charged. Let's just see if she comes on. Well, lighting up. Can't beat that for a dollar, huh? As I said, this is the Gateway KAV60. That's the model. It's horrible wallpaper they have on here. I have no idea what's on this thing because it was running, uh, it wouldn't start up uh, unless I had it plugged in. Now it's only got, it's a 1.6 uh, gigahertz processor, Atom processor, which is not all that good. But the power supply from my little Acer uh, Windows 7 starter that I have fits this also. Uh, let's see, computer may be at risk. Well, this has got Norton, it's turned off, or we're gonna get dumped Norton. Norton's no damn good. We'll take that out and put Avast in. But right now, I can't use these pads. I hate these things. You have to play so much games here, trying to turn it. Yeah, 
Well, nothing happens in the start menu here. I really need my glasses. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay, this is a 10 inch as I mentioned. Uh, oh man, this is hard to see. See what my computer has in it. Okay, this has got a 160 gigabyte hard drive. Just like my little Acer has. And it's got 128 gigabyte free. So I don't think it's got all that much in it. I have to play around with it. But anyways, I'm going to play around with this off camera because I need reading glasses and my magnifying glass. And then I got to try to dump Norton and so forth. Well, that's the find for today. I thought I did really good. Thank you for watching.